Hello, welcome to the dynamics analysis of the Albatross UAV for the Flight Dynamics Lab. My name is James Coleman, and this video will be a flight test briefing for the Albatross UAV based on simulations. First up is the weight and balance of our aircraft. First of all, this little ball here is the center of gravity or CG for our aircraft. This blue bar is the mean aerodynamic chord, the front of which is the coordinate 000. This axis here is the longitudinal axis of the CG, the z-axis, that we can see changing here. We can see that when I move it back, it becomes more positive, and when I move it forwards, it becomes negative. Okay, I'm now going to load the weight and balance portion of our setup. Here we can see the aircraft resting upon three uh, weighing scales, showing the uh, mass reaction on each scale. Because we know the distances of the wheels in relation to the aircraft, if we know the forces on them, we can calculate the moment arm on them and therefore the location of the CG. If I change the Z value here for the center of gravity, we can see here that by changing the mass to zero, we change the location of the CG and therefore the reactions on each force balance. We can vary this location of CG within the game and calculate the measured load on each point. We can put this with the numbers of the locations of the wheels into Excel, calculate the moments, and because we know that the total mass of the aircraft is 7 kilos, we can calculate the actual CG location of the... We can, we can calculate the location of the CG. Uh, we can compare this from the actual data to the estimated data that we've calculated, and we can see a pretty good uh, correlation between them. In theory, we would see a plot of y equals x, or, or sort of 1 to 1. However, we can see that it's slightly offset, but that's okay. Uh, these are the wheels down forwards and backwards CG limit. So for example, if I put the uh, X position to be 0 0.126, the aircraft is stable, but once I move that to 127, the aircraft tips onto its tail. Now we're in the thrust test setup. Here at the front of the aircraft, we can see the load cell. This will tell us how much thrust the aircraft is making. We can find the static thrust when the CG is at 0 0.05. The RPM can be seen in the top corner here. We can take the RPM to 100%. Here we can see that the measured load is 28 newtons. Taking this data for a variety of points and putting it into Excel, we can make a plot of the static thrust for each RPM. This allows the pilot to have some idea of the static thrust at various different points from this calibration. In the static control response, for my student ID, as can be seen here, the rudder and flaps need to be reversed, so that flaps down is in the proper configuration, roll left, roll right, your left, your right, pitch up and pitch down. In the dynamic control response, X and Y on the Xbox controller change the trim. This can be seen here. The sign of the change in the trim angle is consistent with the sign of elevator input. The pitch response is also consistent with lift on the tail. For this CG and wind speed, the short period response can be observed when activation of the uh, elevator. This. this data can be taken into Excel. The Albatross was tested for pitch responses across three different CG locations and four air wind speeds. It can be seen that as air speed increases, the elevator response becomes quicker and the short period reduces in size, with higher damping ratio and frequency. It can be seen that, as the percentage mean aerodynamic chord increases, the response in the short period become larger. At 0% mean aerodynamic chord, we can see that the maximum elevator input only has a change of about 5 degrees. We can also see that at 25% mean aerodynamic chord, the total response is about 17 degrees at stall speed. The short period for uh, cruise conditions is also plotted, and the short period is 12.7389. Compared to the value from Appendix A, the theoretical value of 13.357. The most aft CG position at which acceptable pitch control of the aircraft can be maintain maintained is around 25%. In the lateral response, different amounts of on input vary the roll rate. For example, here is a faster roll rate and a slower roll rate, as shown on the graph. In Excel, we can see how much the free stream velocity impacts the roll rate. Higher velocities have higher roll rates. Comparing the yaw response, the damping of the yaw response is much lower than the damping of the roll response. The thrust line on this UAV is offset, causing the thrust and pitch to be coupled. In Excel, the response is shown for different CG vertical locations and the amount of change that they each produce. 
from this plot, we can identify that the location where there is zero coupling is minus 0 0.03585. This is the point where there is th zero thrust pitch coupling. Next is the wind tunnel experiment, which is being run for a variety of different CG locations, flat configurations, and elevated deflections across a range of different alphas. Running this. and then taking the data into Excel. This is the data for the aircraft from the static wind tunnel test. A plot of the CL versus alpha for three flat configurations can be seen here. The CL maxes for each configuration are noted here. With an increase in the flap setting, the CL increases. From the data sheet, the CL max is expected to occur at 12.834 degrees. And it can be seen that all CL maxes occur at 10 degrees. And the CL maxes are expected to be 1.2 and 1.4 for zero and full flap configurations. Down here, we can see the CL versus CD graph for three flap deflections. Where the flap is at zero degrees, the blue line can be seen here. Further scrolling down, the CL over CD graph across CL can be seen plotted here. The peaks of each graph represent the maximum L over D. The maximum L over D for each flap configuration is seen in each square here. 15.7, 14.9, and 13 for each 0, 20, and 40 degrees flap, respectively. And these occur at 0 0.6887, 0 0.5678, and 0 0.4469 CL each, respectively. The L over D calculated is significantly lower than the CL over CD from the manufacturer of 30. The CM for ZL plots across three different elevator angles are seen plotted here. It can be seen that this orange line here passes through zero, zero. This means that the moment is zero at that particular CL, and that's for the elevator at minus 15 degrees. Therefore, I would advise to trim the elevator at minus 15 degrees for the best performance at the default CG. For the longitudinal stability, we can see the CM versus CL plot for different CG locations here. If a plot is negative, then the aircraft is stable. If the, aircraft, if the plot is positive, then it is not stable. Therefore, we can see that when the CG is at minus 50% and minus 25% uh, mean aerodynamic cord, the aircraft is stable. However, when the aircraft is at 100% mean aerodynamic cord, it is not stable. When the CG location is at the same point as the neutral point, the static margin is zero, and therefore we would expect the graph to be horizontal. The closest graph here is this gray line, which is the CG at 50% mean aerodynamic cord. A straight line would be between these two graphs, so between 50 and 25%. Therefore, I'd estimate the neutral point to be at 40 to 45% mean aerodynamic cord. The combined nose gear and rudder input are sufficient for manoeuvring the aircraft on the ground. However, turning at a high speed would put excessive lateral forces on particularly the nose gear, but main gear also. This would cause the gear to fail and the UAV to collapse. There's also a risk of a wing strike. The minimum speed needed to achieve wheels off the ground without flaps is about 23 meters per second. With flaps, this is about 22 meters per second. For this CG location and for the 25 degrees elevator angle of attack change. This is much higher than the estimated stall speed of 10.546 meters per second. At 25 degrees trim and a throttle setting of 22 RPM, cruise trim condition of 20 meters per second can be achieved. At this CG location, with an elevator trim of 40 degrees, the minimum trimmed flight speed was found to be about 19 meters per second. The maximum trimmed level flight speed was found to be about 54 meters per second, with minus 2.033 degrees elevator trim. Long period or fugoid of the aircraft can be seen tested here where the CG is at a Z location of 0 0.03. This data can be taken into Excel. The time period is 13.782, and therefore the frequency is 0 0.0725541. With all of this information, the aircraft can be trimmed and operated to fly a test circuit around checkered pylons around an airfield with a target altitude of about 30 meters and a target cruise speed of 20 meters per second. This video is sped up 10 times.